Okay, we're with NatureWorks, uh, Steve Davis, who's uh, Vice President Performance Packaging, and Leah Ford. Leah Ford, who's the Communications Marketing Manager. Um, thank you both for taking part. Um, I don't know who wants to take this question, but uh, it's been quite noticeable this morning that PLA is doing very well. How do you account for uh, the growth and adoption of PLA? What is it? Yeah, I think generally it's that after some what, 15 years in the market, we, we've found the sweet spot where we've got the functional materials fit with what works, whether it's some, some close to home examples for my business, coffee capsules, um, co redesigning coatings for paper, rigid packaging is, and food serviceware, which is the organics waste diversion argument you've heard in spades at this conference. All those are where we work very well. Um, and where there's a great alignment with the, the bigger plastics discussion that's going on that you've heard a lot, you know, driven a lot by the litter and marine debris mm. concerns. We're not, set out, we're not setting out to solve those, but the concerns about plastics in general, where they come from, what's caused by the manufacturer, that's driving huge demand for where our materials work. So um, it, it follows on clearly that you're, you're going to add capacity. Um, when, where, and how much? Take that one. No, that's a great question. Uh, I think it's been pretty clear that we're committed to growing and we have a lot of work underway to be able to evaluate where and when that's going to work best because everything has to be done um, with economies of scale and feedstocks in mind. So there's a lot of things to consider. The market's changed a lot since the last time we really discussed expansion. And so there's a lot of new factors for us to consider as we uh, get ready to build. Okay, well, it's very carefully not answered the question. Um, <laughs> I seem to recall last time you were looking at the Far East, isn't that right? And that didn't, that didn't come off. Um, so is it likely to be US-based, do you suppose? Uh, well, it's fair to say we've, yeah. we're, we're back looking at all options, whether it's we're looking at US, at Europe, at Asia. It's the alignment of where are the feedstocks, where's the market, and where's the, what's the local incentive package? And when we last looked at that in 2010, 2011, well, that's six years ago. Mm. So we're, we're going back now and looking at what are the incentive packages in all those regions. So okay. it's probably a three-year runway. Okay, and in the meantime, the Total Corbion are up and running with right. that new plant. So, yeah. yeah. And the, we welcome yeah. To the, the clock's market. ticking. I mean, clearly, there's yeah. a pressing demand, so we're glad, to, we're glad to see more. Okay. We can't move from being niche, niche to mainstream with a single supplier, so there's plenty of room for... For other suppliers in, in here, you uh, PLA is a it's a it's a recyclable, uh, but it's also compostable. So it's it's kind of dual personality. I just want to look at the recycling issues. Um, and do you believe that the the waste recovery stream is is properly geared up to recycle PLA? Uh, I know it can technically be done, but can it? logistically be done? That's the question. Well, that's a good question, um, especially so the, some of the points that came up this morning because what got lost, I think, in a lot of the detailed questions this morning was some of the overarching global statistics, no better summarized than by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, who presented here previously, and mm -hmm. we've had a three-year partnership with them as well. And I don't remember the exact statistics, but something like 8% of global plastics are collected and then some some subfraction of that are it's, actually truly recycled. It's so, low, yeah. so the issue isn't PLA or any new plastic. It's oh. the, it's the infrastructure is not there in general for plastic, and hence the tremendous pushback, and hence the single-use plastics directive. So it's not a, a PLA or any new plastics issue. It's a it's a plastics problem that they've the, the infrastructure is simply not there, and and it's uh, they're victims of their own success plastics because they're work so well and are produced so cheaply, it's cheaper to, to, until now, to dig new ones out the ground, convert that mm -hmm. fossil fuel into a plastic than it is to recycle. And until those economics change, we're going to be, we're going to struggle, not, not as a bioplastics industry, but as plastics as a society. I think that's fair comment. And yet the direction of travel does seem to be the circular economy, which is recycling. So, uh, and then the other thing that struck well, I, me... I, 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 I can't <laughs> let you go with that, which is recovery. Yeah. Recycling in, in Europe is defined as organics, recycling, recovery, and traditional mechanicals. So there's, there's room for both. And if you look at what the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has put together in their blueprint, expressly calls out organics diversion and the need for that. And you see that 
close to home for us, state by state, states are putting in place um, aggressive landfill diversion or uh, landfill diversion targets and to get the recovery goals they need. They can't get those recovery goals without going after the organics, getting that out of landfill. And for that, you need a vehicle, which is compostable plastics, be it in a coffee capsule or be it in food service bar. So I think for us, the, there's a perfect fit with this circular economy theme. Okay. Uh, just a last question. Yeah. Um, Drop-ins. Uh, he's, he's phrasing a difficult question here. You can see no, it not really. But I, I think we've talked about it before. But it seems to me that there's two industries trying to to live together here under the same umbrella. And yeah. um, do you think that can continue, or is the day going to come, really, when? Uh, two industries being bio uh, compostables and uh, and let's say drop-ins for want of a better word, but okay, or recyclables. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you think the day will come when actually those two divisions are going to have to separate and be treated differently? Drop-ins versus well, recyclables versus yeah. compostables. Well, they are treated differently today, yeah. and yet they sit here in the same room, um, and we talk about a bio-based uh, family industry i think the time will come and we see it already with our own conference our own innovation takes root conference it's not a bio-based plastics conference or a degradable plastics conference it's an advanced materials functional materials conference where we talk about where these materials work where they're winning oh. so for us it's we want to shift the conversation from it's a given things need to come from a renewable resource they need to be responsibly recovered that's a given we're addressing that we want to talk about where they work and not replacing, as the purchasing manager made the point, replacing all commodity plastics. Come on. There's room for many, many different materials with different functional fits. I like that a lot, actually. Do you think we should stop drawing the distinction between uh, fossil-based and, and bio-based and just talk about plastics and horses for courses? We've actually sort of done that in the U.S. In the U.S., different than here, where we have a bioplastics association. Right. In the U.S., we set up that that wasn't housed separate from the plastics industry. It was it's under the umbre umbrella of the Plastics Industry Association. It's part and parcel of the. It's not an us versus them discussion. We're just we house the bioplastics discussion within what is now called the Plastics Industry Association. Yeah. So maybe this conference has has done its work and can. I think it, it'll be a sign of when it's sort of grown up when it <laughs> becomes part of the you know Plastics Europe discussion.